Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. On today's show, I talk to a comics artist. I pause because they're also a web comics artist or they're getting into web comics. We have a conversation about how I kind of consider the work they've been doing web comics, but they are now working on a series that is going to be a web comic. I just said web comics a lot. Anyway, it's a person I've been talking to online for quite a while, and I really do love their art style. Um, it, the, it's, it's this, it's, we, I try to describe it in the show. L listen to me. I'm even stumbling now. It's sort of realistic, but it's also a cartoonish thing. It's, it's really in the wheelhouse of stuff that I would buy going to a comic book store. The stuff that was like the indie thing next to the superhero comics. Anyway, it's a great conversation. The person is a web developer. So we also talk a little bit about the, difficulties of running a website, of using services, and why we both kind of use a service that's just already available because <laughs> we've done work creating websites for a living. Um, and uh, we also talk a bit about how the person didn't realize that maybe they could make their webcomic an ebook and sell that because it's something I'm experimenting with right now. So we have a discussion about uh, the process of making an ebook and uh, selling it on Amazon and actually getting paid that way for just having people check it out on Kindle Unlimited. So we talk about all that stuff. It was a fun conversation. So here it is starting right now. My name is uh, Sarah Harvey Patrick and I draw uh, comics most of them end up on Instagram. I'm trying to make a web comic for the first time. So for the first time now, see, you have a website and it's, it's covered with comics. So, <laughs> so what do you mean you're trying to make a web comic for the first time? Tell me about that. <laughs> well, I, I used to just make uh, diary comics or, or draw something that looked interesting. Uh -huh. And uh, for the first time I've, I've tried to create like a world I've got a coffee shop in my uh, in my pretend world in um, classical Hades, and I've got baristas that are serving um, baristas that are minotaur minotaurs. I have uh, baristas that are heroes of Elden times, and they're serving um, gods like Anubis lately. Okay. And, uh, his, his cup was uh, his name was misspelled on his cup as Yukanuba. So <laughs> that kind of stuff. <laughs> okay. So. Well, <laughs> so when you say that uh, it being a web comic, so you didn't, was it that the other ones weren't series where it was yeah. it that you weren't. Okay. So the other ones were just random. Cause I feel like I've, uh, when I look at your stuff, there are ones or at least at the very, at the very least were short series, or are you just saying they were always one-offs or was it that it wasn't as consistent? Like what's the difference between what you were doing and the web comic that you're starting? Oh yeah. They were um, pretty much uh, one-offs. They were, I guess I was kind of a um, a, uh, a reoccurring character in them, but I wasn't very consistent with how I drew myself, so I might not have looked like a reoccurring character. <laughs> okay, all right. I really vaguely just resembled a human, a human figure, but um, now I'm trying to make people that uh, characters that look like like a, a distinct character. Okay, and also, where are you located right now? I just realized I haven't asked you where you're located. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, we, I'm in exotic Rochester, New York. Um, we moved here two years ago from Brooklyn. So, okay. Is that a huge difference? I don't know anything about New York and now you're basically saying one neighborhood to the other or city or. No. Okay. I always thought when I lived in New York city, I thought everywhere outside of New York city in New York state was like upstate. And I okay. knew upstate there was um, like maple syrup and, and delicious <laughs> crafts and <laughs> craft breweries and all kinds of things. Yeah. But uh, Rochester is in the uh, western, northwestern corner, and it's right by Lake Ontario. So it's got some crazy, like, um, uh, Great Lakes weather. In one day, you can get all of the weather, like, possible, known to man. Really? Most of the time, it's just cloudy, and it's it might rain, it might snow, it might be 60 degrees, and it might go down to 30 degrees, and it's because of these lakes. Huh. Crazy. <laughs> no kidding. I didn't know that. See, I've been told that same thing about like, uh, I want to say Vancouver. Like it's yeah. the same, like, even though it's in Canada and it's like higher up, higher yeah. up, I'm doing it like it's going, I'm, I'm literally like doing it like it's taller. Um, but yeah, <laughs> but it, it's just because of the location by the water. It does that. Huh? Yeah. Wow. I never it, knew, never always lived on the Atlantic, like New Jersey, Virginia, okay. 
South Carolina, but now it's like, this is a whole other animal that I have never, it's like the Seattle of the East. It's crazy. Isn't that also where uh, Dick Van Dyke was located in the Dick Van Dyke show? Maybe. I think it is. Okay. I, I wasn't sure if you, if you, <laughs> if you would have any oh, knowledge man. of that. Like it would be one of those things kind of like how Minneapolis has a statue of Mary Tyler Moore that yeah. maybe they, you know, there's the, <laughs> the uh, Petri family <laughs> statue. Well, I would love it if there was a statue of, of Dick Van Dyke just like in, in the middle of downtown. <laughs> Why? Why is this happening? No, we have Frederick Douglass everywhere, statues. I don't so know who he, that is. Who's Frederick Douglass? Oh, you should look up Frederick Douglass. He's he's like a great um, like equal rights activist from okay. the like early, this is going to be, oh my goodness, poor history teachers watching this, but I believe he's the early 1900s. <laughs> All right. Hey, I didn't know who it was to begin with, so I've already I've already been shunned by any sort of can history you, fanatics. Can you cut this part out? <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Just kidding. Okay. Um, and then, uh, so before I asked, or when I asked that, what I was going to ask was, um, how did you get started cartooning? Uh, how long have you been doing it? Oh, wow. Well, I've always, um, I started my professional life as a newspaper reporter, so I've been writing you did? for a long time. Like you started yeah. that way? Yeah. <laughs> Just one day you were like, now I'm a newspaper reporter. Yeah. Poof. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how did I get this job? But yeah, I did that for a long time. So I always had kind of a writerly uh, outlook on things. And then um, I always kind of doodled, but I went to New York uh, to study comedy writing with like Upright Citizens Brigade and The Pit and all those guys. Okay. And then um, I did improv and then my improv team broke up and I was like, oh man, I don't know if improv is where I should be putting all my energy anyway. So I just started to draw cartoons and that was about the time of um, Instagram where um, where I got on Instagram, I guess this is maybe 10 years ago, and I thought, man, all I have to do to put a comic up like on the internet is to take a picture of it with my phone. <laughs> mm-hmm. so I've gotten a little more technical since then, but um, yeah. Just, Wait, you were taking pictures? You weren't even, you yeah. were taking a photo of it and uploading yes. it? Yes. I can't okay. even tell you how, ter- how like rudimentary my digital art process has been, I, it would make you weep, but yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was so like, it was so friendly, you know, like Instagram can be kind of friendly to comics people. Oh yeah. So, so kind. And just like all the feedback, you can ask people questions and they don't mind. And I just got excited and I just started drawing and I kept drawing and it really, really caught on with me. I, uh, in, you know, when I started, I actually didn't think I was allowed to do that. I thought it had to be pictures. I didn't think I could put my, like I, I I was very confused about Instagram when it first started. Like everybody was taking photos. And also that was back when the reason people mostly use it was because of the filters. Now nobody uses a filter barely, you know, it's, but it was, I I felt like if I posted comics and I also started uh, starting out, this is what I thought of Flickr too, even to go farther back. Um, I thought if I started posting drawings and stuff, they'd be like, Hey, this is a photography site, you know, and that's, that was just my own stupid, you know, uh, insecurities. So I, for the longest time did not post comics on it forever. And even when I first started using it, I was like, okay, I'm going to try and take photos of things that happen. But then I started finding other people like yourself who were posting all the, and they were getting all these likes and I'm like, Oh, you can do this. It was just a stupid. So yeah, I, I mean, I may have joked going, you took a photo and you didn't, I mean, me, I didn't even think I could put drawings yeah. on there. Cause they'd be like, no, it's photography only dude. Right. Get out of here. So it's no, <laughs> one, me too. Exactly. I saw other people starting to, and I'm like, this is so easy. I can draw it. I can take a picture and other people will give me feedback and I get to know other artists. And uh, so that's where it happened. Okay. Now yeah. you said you would just, draw but i mean what kind of background did you have because your your drawings are comic like but they're also cartoon like they're they're that they're they're like what i call the happy medium between comic book art and web comic art it's when i used to go to the comic book store like the kind you know superhero comic book store i'd go there to get the stories but there were these indie your stuff reminds me of the things that i would buy going this is attainable this is a person i can hang out with like of course i wanted the superhero stories but i would always buy these comics that were in the style that you draw they were they were the ones that i really liked and i still have a bunch of them today and they were some of my favorite stories so what is your 
background in that because I do really love the way that you draw. I love your style and the way that you do it. Thank you so much. Um, I mean, I like superhero comics and I, cause I like their detail. I like how realistic they look. I love that. Mm -hmm. But um, also I think the, the comedy like nature and uh, having been a journalist where I say what I need to say or whatever like that. Um, I think it makes me feel like um, I can be, like I want to be a little bit irrever irreverent. And this is like, I know that my, my comics are not like irreverent mm -hmm. as as some of the, you know, the alternative comics of lore of the classic day of the alternative comic, not at all. Like they're not like, you know, I'm not out to scare you, but I want to be, I want to do whatever I want to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. But part of it is um, I, uh, I'm like a web developer for money. <laughs> and Been there. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. And I did a coding boot camp, and it was so it was so like different than anything I'd ever done before that I would get really frustrated and I would just like walk out of the house. This is when I still lived in Brooklyn, and but I would take my sketchbook and I had never tried to draw people like. From life before I just sat on the subway and I just took all my frustrations out and these like these inky I drew mm -hmm. hands I was drawing backpacks I was drawing feet non-stop for maybe two or three years and um and I think I think partly that's where like I kind of it's kind of weird it's kind of cool to uh, actually try to make something real like the realistic factor actually adds like an extra like twist of weirdness to it when you do the weird thing. And I think that's what like Robert Crumb and all of them did. Cause they were so like, they, they, I don't really like, I can't say they're an influence cause I haven't read enough, but I've read, you know, like I've delved, but I haven't become obsessed with them in the proper way that I probably should. Yeah. What's, you know, right. Like, what are, what are some of the comic artists that you, uh, that you are influenced by? Well, I love, I love um, the Tamaki folks. Oh, like, okay. Summer. They're so lovely. Like I'm showing this is probably backwards, but um, <laughs> <laughs> and um, I like Liana Finnick. I don't know if I said her name right. She's just brilliant. Just just her simple drawings in the New Yorker. I guess I guess I would say anything that's more comic memoir because okay. it's not it's not in the like. It's not a serial and it's not necessarily, it's kind of a personal story. So people, I feel like feel emboldened to be as quirky as they want to be, okay. even though they're like, I mean, they're professional and they're drawing it, but also it's not like in the style of DC comics. Okay. It's like very varied. Yeah. And I think what you're, you're saying is kind of like what I was talking about before. Like they're, they're put out as comics and they're usually, they're the ones where if you do go to the comic book store, you look at those and they'll be like, okay, you like to read comics. Not just like, hey, I, I hate what they did with Superman in this one. This isn't the kind of, you know, on, on planet Krypton, this didn't happen and that doesn't work with the story. You know, ones where yeah. it's, yeah, it's like, uh, no, these are, it's, it's like literature only in comic book form. Eh, I don't know. Yeah. We both know what we're talking about, but it's hard yeah. to explain. <laughs> Yes, right. yeah. and, the, and the the style of art can be so wide. It can like vary so wildly, and yet when they really capture what they're trying to say, it doesn't matter like what the art looks like because it all comes together and it's so powerful and it's so good. Mm -hmm. and I guess I like the uh, like the individuality of like comic memoir or like even stories that like diverge from the like you know superheroes. Yeah, but I do like I do like superheroes. I get it. I like sometimes when they seem like a realistic story and then all of a sudden out of nowhere, there's like a ghost or, yes. or you know, like some supernatural thing happens and not like a corny thing, like all of a sudden no. and now, you know, something where it's just like, oh, wait, like a like a sixth sense sort of thing where it's like, oh, oh they were dead the entire time, right. you know, like that sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think the scariest like scene in any movie ever was during the sixth sense when they walk into the kitchen and all the drawers are pulled out. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, because it's like. <laughs> If that really happened in your own kitchen, you would just like scream out loud. And it's just drawers. Yeah. Being, I don't know if you remember that, but yeah. yeah but it's that one weird thing in such a realistic setting. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, all right. Now back to what you were talking about before. You went on the subway and you said you, had, you hadn't drawn people before and you just started drawing people on the <laughs> subway. Okay. That's one thing. But okay. your your human form 
is uh, that you draw your human form. I elaborate on that sentence, Tom. <laughs> your, <laughs> the human form that you draw is very well polished. And so how did you go from, you know, you're drawing people now. Like, that's not the easiest thing. If anything, it's probably the last thing people want to draw. <laughs> is that in hands, apparently. Um, you know, but what, how did you, did you take classes or did you just really practice a lot? Like, how did you kind of hone the skill of drawing the people in your comics? Oh, yeah. I just practiced a lot. I guess I took one, I took one continuing ed class at, um, um, SVA and it was illustration. So it really wasn't a lot. It wasn't like a high volume of drawing and it was, you know, draw a poster for a band. Draw oh, okay. this and that. So it was, and then she would critique it. She was really excellent. Um, and she said that people hate drawing hands, but it was like after, after two or three years of drawing on the subway, like sometimes hands are the most interesting thing you can draw without people getting nervous. Like you're, <laughs> <laughs> right. if you stare too long at their tote bag, they're like, are you looking at my stuff? <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. I never thought of that. Yeah, it looks like you're you're uh, eyeing their valuables. Yes, or their faces. <laughs> like, why are you looking at me? But shoes and hands. But uh, I think I think for me, it was just doing it so much. <laughs> okay, all right, and that's valid. Uh, how long How long did you start? Well, actually, when you start a project, so you went from that to uh, now you're doing cartoons or uh, I never know if they should be called comics or cartoons. Instagram, if you look at the, uh, the alt tags mm -hmm. inside of it that they automatically yeah. generate, they call them cartoons. Oh. So that's why I've been using the hashtag cartoons, even though oh. I consider cartoons animations, you know, but, oh, yeah. but Instagram's alt tags calls them cartoons. So oh. I, I, I just realized that you said you were a web developer. So you knew what the heck I was talking about when yeah, I said alt tags. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm from the day of like comic strips being syndicated in newspapers. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's what I think of as like a, a comic strip is a cartoon. Yeah. Um, do a, uh, I guess, um, I guess I've made some comic essays and I've sent them out. So I guess like, comic I guess essays, I essays like just a script. No, like um, a longer comic that, um, oh. like I sent one into the rumpus and they're like, Oh, we like it. And it was maybe maybe ten panels, but it kind of it was a little bit um, like um, it was a little bit of a mini memoir. So. Was that the robots one? Yeah. Oh yeah, Rumpus was the robots. I sent one into Hobart that was more like sad. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no, but the robots was an essay too on capitalism. Right. <laughs> I enjoyed that one. It was it was good. It was Me too. yeah the the <laughs> the uh, basically the animatronic, not animatronic but. Uh, anthropomorphized ATM. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. That, that, I think that was, I think that for me, that was like my most, um, like from my heart that I ever like sent in that I wasn't trying to tailor. Like, okay. I have to be polite. I have to be heart, heartfelt, heartwarming, but actually I think, yeah. And a sentient ATM is me. That is straight from my heart. Okay. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how to interpret that. So you're either. you're saying you're a sentient ATM is what you're saying. Yeah, that makes I, it sound like you're an alien of some sort yeah, here to take I, our money. I, I, I associate with that. Me and me and that ATM would hang out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, funny. Uh, but the the process of making these themselves. So with your drawing um, and the the style that you've come up with, what is I guess, what is your process actually drawing? Like what sort of tools are you using? Are you just doing pen and ink? Are you doing tablet? Are you doing a mixture? What's, okay. what is your process when you actually draw something? Okay. I should tell you that when I first started drawing these and I started making them um, digital instead of just taking pictures of them, okay. I would draw on a piece of paper. I would take a picture of it. I would put it into Adobe Illustrator and make a trace of it. So then I'd have the black heavy lines. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then I put uh, layers of color under it. Okay. So that took a long time. <laughs> yeah. Well, and also because the trace isn't necessarily perfect every time. Right. Yeah. Yes. And it was all muddy and, and I thought, well, you know, it's okay because like I draw like this anyway, <laughs> not really, but I liked like the inky whatever. Mm -hmm. But last year I got a tablet. Yay. And I don't feel like I've, I have like sold out, like I haven't sold out paper. No, 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 not at all. <laughs> right. It just cuts out all the steps and I can like 
kind of erase it while I'm drawing it. And, oh, it's like catnip. I'm just, I can't get away from, now I'm drawing even more. <laughs> yeah, that's the way I see it. Um, the only yeah. uh, drawback is when I don't have my tablet with me. I mean, because that's the other thing too, is I never, I don't. I rarely carried a sketchbook with me. It's like, I'm not going to start carrying a bag that has a sketchbook everywhere I go. So yeah. <laughs> that was, oh. that, but so I started trying to learn to do it on my phone and I've gotten okay at it. It's still yeah. not perfect. The worst way to draw is on your phone because it's like doing it with your finger is you can't see what you're drawing because your finger's in the way, but that's what you have to draw with. But really? it's you kind of an applied stylus? skill. No, no, not on the phone. On, on, the, phone. on the tablet I do. Yeah. Uh, what tablet are you using? Oh, I iPad Pro. Okay. So I have a, an Apple Pencil. Okay. I I have a uh, Android, uh, a Galaxy with an S Pen, which okay. it's an older version and they've fixed it since then. But my biggest problem with it is, is that the pencil is like this little skinny thing. It's not even, it doesn't even emulate the size of a, of a small pencil. Whereas with oh. the stylus that you have with the iPad, it's a big, nice, chunky thing with right. a good point on it. It's like an unsharpened pencil that's always got a point, you know? <laughs> yeah, I do like it. I do like it. It's a little pricey and I lose it in blankets all the time. Oh, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I can't call the pencil Apple. <laughs> right. So now like, are, you're drawing those in there and uh, well, actually what brush setting do you use? Because your drawings look like they're done with a Copic pen or um, oh, not a Copic, I a, uh, you know, one of those, one of those, uh, I think it's brush a Copic. Pens. Yes. Yes. Brush yeah. Yeah. It does look like a brush pen. Mm -hmm. Ah, it's, um, it's just marker setting. Okay. I'm speaking out here, but okay. I am so, when I first started it, I was like, oh, uh -huh. like, like the width of the, of the, um you know, of the line would, would respond to how hard I was pressing down on the tablet. So it was like, oh, this is very nice. But it, it is kind of weird that there's no like gritty paper. Mm -hmm. I was used to gritty paper and there's no grit. Right. I know some tablets have grit, but I like mine. I love the I've stuff. heard about that. Somebody told me there's a kind that uh, they came out with that makes it feel like you're drawing on paper. Because I will say that was the biggest hurdle for me when I started drawing on a tablet. It's like drawing on a piece of like slippery ice. You right. Know, you know, even yes. you'd go to do a swoop that you're used to doing. And it's like, well, that just far extended more than I thought it would. Yes. It's like, I guess it wasn't there a scene in Bambi where Bambi tries to like get out on the ice. Right. Yeah. <laughs> slides around and spurls, spins out. I felt exactly like that. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I'm getting used to it, but. Okay. And what program okay. are you drawing in? Oh, Procreate. Okay. You're using Procreate. All right. It's free and I can make animations even though I don't even though I guess Instagram loves animations, but that has, I haven't done it yet. Okay. <laughs> so from that point you were, you were drawing and you get you, now you're doing the tablet and you've submitted some comics. Yeah. Um, now, I mean, what made you release those comics? Oh, I guess like from, a, um, from having written like throughout my twenties, I, I was always aware that you, you know, you write a thing and you turn it in to a publication. And then I didn't know that comics, you could do that. And then I started thinking of the comics as essays and started turning them in. So well, how were you finding these places? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's one thing to go, I should submit these, Yeah. but like, where were you, go how did you decide where I should be submitting it? And also what was your process for submitting? Because that's a difficult thing. You can't just email someone and go like, Hey, check out my stuff, put it in your website. Right. <laughs> or can you? I don't know. <laughs> You're well, the one that did it. <laughs> I know. No, it was like, um, I think I saw it. Um, I think I came across Hobart Pulp and it had a lot of comics in it. And some of the comics weren't just like little four panel. They were like longer. And I thought, oh, this is a thing. And I guess the New Yorker, you know, they have shouts and murmurs. And so I always knew that there was like in the wild, there was a place for longer comics kind of. Anyway, but I sent my first one in, well, Spiral Bound on Medium. I sent one into Spiral Bound. Okay, so got, you did a Medium platform. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And I got rejected off of the first time I sent one in. But then I sent in another one to Spiral Bound and I got in and I thought, oh, well, there's probably more. And then I found Hobart and then Rumpus. And there's a few more that are like really plum for essays. So I don't feel like I got like the, it's not like a pay thing where you get like a lot of money, but it is kind of cool that someone has like put a stamp of approval on your work and said, Oh, I right. love this. Thank you for submitting this. We're going to put it up and 
it was just like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's nice. That that's one thing that comics can do. They what don't. They can be in books, yeah. You know, or they can be. They could catch viral sensation. They be, they can become a viral sensation on your website or online, but they can also like be in a publication. That's kind of a cool thing for your resume. Okay. What were some of the first comics that you were submitting when you were doing this? Oh, I um, I did one, a little one, like a little slice of life. About one day, um, uh, it was we were in New York, and we were um, my wife and I, we were uh, crossing the street. I was taking her to work. Um, she worked at a little bar, and <laughs> right in the middle of like I think Sixth Avenue, there was a billboard, like a, one of those electronic billboards, and it was Charlize Theron. Um, okay. like for maybe for one of the perfume companies and she was like coming up out of a bath and it was like a gray day. So like the light that the sign was throwing off was just like a sunrise. <laughs> and then it was like, it was also funny cause we were like gay and we're like walking towards this woman arising out of the bath <laughs> anyway. So we were like laughed really hard and we were like holding hands and we had hamburgers and, um, I <laughs> <laughs> I love that little detail right there. <laughs> we had hamburgers. <laughs> no, no. So I was like, you know what? That would be really funny if I could like somehow capture that. Cause you know, you want to capture it on your phone. You want to make a video, even though you can't make a video of this like experience, this ridiculous thing that happened. Mm -hmm. But I went back and then I, I thought how ridiculous it is that, you know, cause they, they, the ads rotate on the sign. Like it was an Eminem ad and then there was another ad. And then like Charlize, it was going to take a long time for her to come back. So I'm standing in the street with my phone and finally she comes out of the bathtub and I'm like, I had like have my super short haircut and I'm like filming her coming out of the bathtub. Anyway, it was like, it was like weird to be because in New York, sometimes you're very, very like you keep your energy kind of low because everybody is, there's so many people. Mm -hmm. just like, oh, we all have to keep this one level of hum, this one room tone, this whatever we are. And then to be like, not just like, distinct for a moment but like distinctly like queer for a moment it was it was like a weird experience anyway i drew that <laughs> and that's on spiral bound anyway so, yeah, <laughs> i love yeah, the story just kind of petered out there you're like anyway it's on spiral bound i don't know <laughs> <laughs> Hamburgers. Yeah. All you remember. no but you bring up a great point going back to the conversation we had before about like uh feeling comics didn't have a place on Instagram or understanding it. That's exactly why I started putting my comic on Instagram was because when I first started doing it, like I was saying before, it's like, Oh, I'm supposed to take pictures or whatever. And I would see a situation and it would happen and I'd be going, Oh, I got to draw about that. Cause mine is, I mean, basically I just do a, what happened today comic. And I was, and I'll be like, oh, I got to remember to draw about that later. You know, it was th those time periods when it's like, well, that's, that's something I got to draw about right there. Those happen. But as I would walk away and think that I'd go, oh, I didn't even take a picture of what was happening and we're already too far away or it's already gone. And that, and that was the thing is for me, Instagram was, I never remembered to take a picture. So I would draw about it, put the comic up and go, this is what the picture would be up. Just like what you said, the thing that was yeah. happening and you're like, I got to take a picture of it. And you had to stand there and like, wait for her to come up out of the, the tub right. or whatever the hell it was again, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, and yeah. at, at that point, it's like, what am I a director now? You know, it's <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Places everyone, you know, Yeah. Uh, that's exactly yeah. it. Yeah. So you know what? Go ahead. Oh, sorry. I need to say something about your comics, though. Like, oh. I have been a fan for a long time. Because, oh, thank you. Okay. Every day, I try to think, okay, what's the most interesting thing about today? Like, what would I want to remember? And sometimes they're, like, the most fleeting moment. They're, like, they're like exquisitely, like, small. But they're the thing that I want to remember. Mm -hmm. Not small, but, like, one moment, the thing that happens. And I, I will take your comic a lot, and I'll send it to my wife, or I'll send it to my friend, and I'll say, this this kind of thing is what I love because it's, it's like that one moment that you notice yeah. and that's the thing that makes the whole day, like the whole day, either weird or interesting or meaningful or like beautiful or so I love how you, you see that stuff. Well, thank you. Yeah. It's, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> and maybe you can only capture it by drawing it because how could you even take a picture of some things? Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. And, and it goes to, um, it goes back to years ago, there was this service and it's not around anymore, but I found a way to do it myself. It's, it was a service that was called O-Life, which 
I hated the name of it, but it made sense because it made me think of the R.E.M. song, Losing My Religion. So I'd get the email from it and it would be from O Life. And then I'd just be like, oh, now that song's going to be in my head for like an hour. Um, <laughs> you know, but it, what it was is it was, it was a, it was a service where you would just type in, it was a diary thing and it would email you every day and go, um, O Life, what happened today on, you know, February 19th? And you would reply to what it would, you'd set it up to come at the end of each day and you'd type in what happened. And I told people about it and I loved it. It was a way to journal for myself. And what it would do is you'd send this message back to it and it would save it. And then a year later, it would email you back and go, here's what you wrote on this day a year ago and what happened. And it was really cool. And I was like, wow. And you would continue to reply to it and you'd start after a year, you'd be getting emails every day and hearing back from what you wrote to yourself a year ago. It was a cool service. No way to monetize it whatsoever. It folded after two years, but it was a great concept. And when I used to tell people about it, they thought it was neat, but they're like, but nothing, you know, nothing goes on in my life that I could think of. Like, I, I, I'm not exciting enough to write something like that every day, which first of all, that's ridiculous. Everybody's life is exciting. And second, that's the thing is something does happen every day. And that's exactly what you're saying. It's not something to go like, Oh, here's a big event that I can tell you about. It's like, I thought this today, or I felt this way today. That's life, you know, that's, and that's with what you're talking about. Sometimes it's, I can't draw it in a comic or, I mean, I, it's, I could only draw it in a comic because it's, I, I can't, I keep trying to use words I can't think of, uh, yeah. s- not subliminal, but sub yeah. subconscious. Yeah. 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 You know, or, you know, or it's a feeling or whatever the heck, I don't know. It's mm-hmm. just, if for like some, reason, yeah. And it's one of those things, much like with you saying your comics were essays, there's something about if you were to just write it as a script, but you write that script and you show a character with just the slightest bit of emotion it's like, oh, that makes sense now. Whereas if you just read it straight, it'd be like, well, this is kind of okay. I'm, you know, I, this person's upset, I guess. But you show that with just somebody with the slightest frown on their face with the same caption. And it's, wow, that's really emotional. Or right. Know. Anyway. <laughs> no, totally. I don't know. I, I seem to be able to express myself better at drawing it. Yeah. I've never had anything published except for journalism and like maybe one essay about like, the service industry. <laughs> but that is it. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. When right. did you when did you start uh, making your stuff public? When did you start putting it out there? When were you like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and put these out there myself. Why you know, why did you do that? That's a hard thing to do. To go it's one thing to draw it and go, this makes me feel better. But another to go, you know what, I wanna kinda push this out into the world and see what happens with it. I don't know. Um now that we think about it, um, I did, let's see, I did read Stephen Pressfield's um, The War of Art, oh, and then I read okay. Turning Pro, and I thought, wow, what if I did make, what if I did, um, like, dedicate real effort and real energy into this? And I guess it was seeing, like, Spiral Bound, which I don't think is is up anymore. It's still up, but it's not, like, accepting any essays. But, um, okay. yeah, I think it was, it was, like, Stephen Pressfield, he's this uh, really great author, but he's he's like, you know, sit down at your desk every day and you take it seriously and you put effort into it. If that's if this is something that's important to you and meaningful, if you know, if it's art, because sometimes art just, you know, with all the um, you have to pay bills and you have to go grocery shopping and you have to call people. <laughs> Right. You still have to be able to survive in the world. <laughs> right. Otherwise everybody would just stop and do what they love. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I think, I think I read that literally and, um, uh, I thought, okay. <laughs> but he's off. He's also kind of mystical about it. He's like, he's like, if you put these things forth into the world, the muses will see, I mean, I'm not making fun of him and I'm not making fun of him. No, muses. I'm not taking it that way. <laughs> I'm not because I'm saying it and I'm like, I'm like the humblest of all like hobbits. Gandalf will never come to my door. That <laughs> okay. kind of the muses did deign to see and to bless, see this uh, effort that I do put in once in a while. <laughs> that would mm-hmm. be great. Thanks, muses. <laughs> Shout out to the muses. Muses are watching this and they are taking notes. <laughs> Just kidding. <Yeah. laughs> Maybe. Um, you, you started a Etsy shop and you sell a paper comic that you make on there, correct? Right. Just one right now. 
Just one. Okay. How long ago did you start that? Uh, I guess I put that up maybe um, maybe a year ago. Okay. And have you ever thought about doing print on demand books or putting your stuff together in a collection that way? I have not considered these things. How come? Uh, I don't know. I guess it was just another layer of complexity that I hadn't um, considered yet. But what do you think about all that? I have. So when I first started out, I guess... I, the first one I did was just because I wanted to experiment with it. I, I was always interested in the self-publishing books and doing KDP on Amazon, but I'm like, I'd never had anything. And after a year of doing my comic, I'm like, well, I'll try to put together a collected of the whole past year. And I did that. And it was fun. It was nice to get a copy of my own book. You know, it's delivered to me and it's for sale on there, but it was like, so what, you know? Uh, so then I started trying to actually promote it and seeing like, how would I sell this? It, it was one of those things, kind of an experiment to go, uh, you know, how, how do you explain to people what you do or how can you convince people to be interested in what you do? And mine specifically, it's like, Hey, want to read about me and my wife, you know, dealing with the fact that she had breast cancer for a year, you know, it's, it's. It, how do you convince people of that? So, and it was just, you know, just kind of a way to try something, do something with my life, I guess. And, and, you know, something I've been saying I wanted to do forever, you know, you sit around going, no, someday I'm going to try and do this. Well, I was like, well, that time's now. So oh. yeah. And so I printed it, but then did it for a while, tried to promote it, but it's, I stopped because uh, later on finding out from this podcast, I talked to an author and they're just like, oh, you should just concentrate on the ebook. And it's like Spotify because um, there are people who have subscriptions for Kindle Unlimited. And what they do is they're people who read a lot. And those are people that are easier to sell your book to or your comics to. And mm -hmm. so they pay a subscription so they get to read as many things as they want. And when they do, if your book is on the Kindle Unlimited plan, you get paid by people who read each page. So I started looking for people that were interested in the comics that we're talking about today and the stuff that we mm -hmm. like and just concentrated on the ebook instead of trying to convince some person to slap down $9 for a printed yeah. book that <laughs> I'm like, maybe you'll like, maybe you won't. If on Kindle Unlimited, if they don't like it, they just stop reading it and move on. And it's like, I got paid for at least them checking it out. So it's, that's why I ask it's, it's because your stuff where it's hard to sell right away, not right. your stuff. I mean, uh, the stuff that I do, but stuff, in, it's hard to sell right away. But once you start, you get the flow of it and it's like, oh, this is a continuation. This is, it is like an essay or like a book or something that yeah. you can slowly grow into instead. And that's the hardest thing about like, I'll do a web comic and people who follow me get it, but I would share like one of my pages to Reddit or Imager and they'd be like, what the hell is this? Right. <laughs> what the, <what's, laughs> no. I don't get it. And it's like, where's the punchline? And it's like, that's not what it is. <laughs> right. Reddit is like, they do not want it. They're right. Like, Okay, go ahead. Yeah, no, no, that, that's it. And that's what I'm saying. That's what I think of it Aww. is I tried it and I did it anyway. I continued to make the books just because I wanted to order my own book. It was just for myself. But after talking to this author um, who opened my eyes about it and I've been, I've literally been advertised every week. I advertise on Amazon, make new ads. I have like 200 ads and, uh, and now my book is getting read and people will go through the whole series and it's just kind of interesting. And I think it's a real opportunity for not only um, comic creators and web comic people, but for artists in general, like showing their work. It's a way, it's like how you post your stuff online, but you're not getting paid for all the things that we post on Instagram, but right. you can post a book that kind of explains your process. And it's like a coffee table book and people can flip through it in an ebook and look at all your work and the description of the process and all that. And you get paid for people looking at the pictures. I just think it's a really, for me, I'm excited about it. Like, I'm sure I'm not new to this game whatsoever, Wait. but it's like, it's a new avenue where I'm like, oh, there's so many opportunities in this. So I'm like working on different series now to try and put in there. Um, oh, wait, so it's Kindle? Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Amazon KDP. So if you go to kdp.amazon.com. You can okay. create an account there. Um, give it a try. It's one of those things. It's free. You can set it up and yeah. try it out. And it's it's not like you have to pay for the service or anything. Um, I never knew this. I yeah. would totally check that out. Okay. Yeah. It, actually, <laughs> let me know if you have any questions. Like I said, okay. I've been experimenting with it, so I'm happy to help out. 
Um, oh, I totally will. <laughs> so uh, now when you start this web comic that you are talking about, the one that you're working on, where yeah. are you planning to publish this? Is it just going to be on your site? Or are you going to put it on some of the web comic services? Maybe there's one I've put, I might have uh, maybe a dozen of this one I'm working on now. And it is on um, Tapas. Okay. But I have, um, is that how you say it? It's there's so the thing is is they've changed their name it, so it used to be Taptastic, and oh. then they shortened it. I don't know why, probably because it was hard to spell. Um, yeah. And then they shortened it. They shortened it to uh, I I say tapas. Other people say tapas. Yeah, it it's be tapas. You're yeah, right. Either one. It's so I may not be pronouncing it right. I don't know, but yeah, it's they they just switched it to that name like maybe a year or so ago. Oh, okay. Well, it's on there. And, um, um, but, um, yeah, well, I mean, I did get a few, uh, of, of something printed because I was thinking of going to like a, um, a comics expo of some kind, if I could get into one. So I get to go to my first one in March, March 25th. Um, oh, really? yeah, it's just the Rochester Indie Comics Expo, not oh, just cool. that, but it's here in my town. So I could probably just like put my boxes of zines and stuff on a, cart and wheel it there myself without having to drive. <laughs> okay. How much stuff do you have uh, physically? I guess I do have um, two, two of the small um, 24 page books that I got printed at comics well spring. And then I have um, two sets of postcards. I'm going to get some stickers. Okay. And so I think um, I feel like I heard that maybe not at this expo, but at some expos like agents do prowl around and okay. um, you get the bigger ones like in Montreal and, you know, Toronto and all that, but, um, Mocha Fest in New York, which, uh, I'm not going to any of those this year, but, um, eventually it would be nice to like go somewhere in, in person, but, um, yeah, like it's a varied path to all kinds of stuff okay. you know, that we can take with like digital now and paper. Yeah. Paper and digital. And did I hear you say you were using a comic service to print your comics? What was that one that you said? No, it's Comic Wellspring. I think they're just a. Um, I think they're in Michigan. They're just a big printing house. And I know right. I probably should go local and take my comics to someone here, but we're new to town still. It's only been two years in Rochester. Right. So no, I but, will. But they are specifically <laughs> set up to like you can actually yeah. buy Saddle Stitch and all that kind of stuff. Yes. Like they they do all those. Yes. I, there used to be one that uh, back in the day, you know, long time ago when I was like, I'm going to make these little zines and all this. Mm -hmm. and it wasn't lucrative whatsoever because nobody knew who I was and I was at home and I'm like, but I can send it off and I get it cheaper if I put their ad on the back of my comic, you know, yes, it, that's it. That's Just the people. one. That's the same one. Okay. That's what I was oh. going to ask. I couldn't remember the name of it. And I, I actually was looking for it the other day. Cause I'm like, I wonder oh. if they still do that. Okay. Do. Okay. Nice. <laughs> A little nostalgia for me. I, I enjoy that. Cause I, yeah, I was totally going to do that. But then as I was about to push the button, I'm like, well, nobody's going to buy these. I'm, I'm, I don't even have a website for it. it no. This was way back though. Um, okay. So I mean, not no, but I mean, anyway. <laughs> I get I what you're like, saying. <laughs> like you were going, no, nobody's going to buy those. You poor thing. <laughs> they don't buy so much on Etsy. I see some people with comics and zines on Etsy that have a huge following on Etsy. It's like, how did you guys, like these, um, like there's um, a few, there's like one rockabilly sort of persona on there and, and she's got like a thousand like followers on Etsy and she puts out, she drops a zine and there's like a waiting list to get it. And I'm like, how do you, I couldn't even, I couldn't even begin to like, like understand how to build a following on Etsy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> everybody has, I guess, there's a lot of different ways, you know, but I love the Kindle idea. I've never thought about that. I, and so, you know, I just got a tablet. So I've just started reading uh, library books on there and I'm reading oh. like about 150,000% more library books now that all I have to do is like, boop, beep, boop. Right. <laughs> like, exactly. Comics on this rectangular computer. Yeah. You're exactly <laughs> the, that's exactly the type of thing I'm talking about. People that do that exactly. and, and other people that are looking for stuff. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's once I started thinking of it that way, instead of thinking of the print book, because print right. books are easy, not easy, but they're easier to sell in public. Like back when I used to do zine fests yeah. and stuff, you know, people could look through the things and decide whether or not they wanted it or if they wanted the artwork yeah. or whatever. Right. Um, yeah. And, and the uh, now you also have a website. How long has your website been up and running? 
Oh, I guess um, I might have made that maybe six months ago. Oh, that that soon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why did it take you so long to make a website? Not not that you're required to, but. No, because when you do it for work, you're like, I don't want to do it anymore. Agreed. That's the reason that I use Blogger as my service, because I'm like, oh, I don't have to do a darn thing. <laughs> I know. I Yesterday something happened and it had the white screen of death on it. I'm mm. like, you just going to have to wait until I feel like figuring out what happened to you. Right. But then I just knew what happened. So Right. Well, that's the drawback too. It's not that you don't want to work on it because you do it every day. It's because once you start, you're going to go, well, while I'm in here, I guess I could do this. And then I could set this up. And I've been meaning to fix this thing. You know, yeah. that's the problem. That's the real. And next thing I know, it's like I've been doing it for eight hours because yes. it, you can yes. get lost in it. I know. It's like the dad that goes out to the garage to the old, like, <laughs> yes. old Mustang. And he's like, I'm just going to tune up one thing. And you're like, you just don't want to be in the house. And he's out there all night. <laughs> yeah. If I get it, if I get in the site, I'll be like, I can optimize it. Oh, the UX here. Mm -hmm. And then I don't, I'm not drawing. And so that's right. kind of, yeah. Or you're like, uh, oh, I know that there's this one thing where, um, it will change the header depending on uh, what time of day it is or, you know, stupid things that really make no difference to anyone. Like they visited your site for the first time ever. They may yeah. not come back. So right. the fact that you have something that's different each time does not right. matter to them. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but you can't stop because it's so, it is kind of fun when you, you know, you, that's why people code, I guess, because you're like, you're changing a thing and something's happening. Oh yeah. No, it's, I, I used to tell people when I did it, there were, there were two ways that I described to being a front end developer. I said, I'm the person that gets all the credit for just turning the site blue. Yes. And <laughs> the second is, um, oh God, now I'm forgetting what the second one is because I wanted to remember oh. the blue example. Uh, um, oh, well, <laughs> now I don't remember. Um, it's okay. you do, you'll remember. You'll I know I will remember. Uh, it, it's, but it's basically just tinkering with stuff and yeah, fixing it. And, uh, um, I'm already, I'm already going through like a uh, post-traumatic shock thinking about it. Cause I don't do it anymore. I don't, I don't like to do it, but I can't help not teaching myself something about it every day. And I, well, I guess just so I don't lose it. You know, right. one of those things where I, I at least like to stay ahead. And with the cart, why did you decide to go with Etsy instead of like using a service or building like WooCommerce inside of WordPress itself? You know, I know, I know, I guess I might, I might, I think that would probably be a good thing for me to do, but, um, uh, I guess minimum, minimum viable product. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I could do a launch and I guess, you know, Etsy has a community and they, if, Oh, you, you bought this one comic, maybe you'd like this comic from this me. So, um, I know I have to pay them fees a little bit of percentage, but that's true. That's how and it going is. Going the free now. route is always what I start out with first. Cause I never know if it's going to work out. So I don't want to start paying for the service that yeah. everybody says I should use. Right. But then I get stuck with the free service because I'm like, well, I can just make this work. <laughs> now my overhead is still nothing. <laughs> exactly. I know. It is kind of a weird, I guess it's like time and energy and. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know what? I did, I did learn a lot from books. Uh, there was one that, um, uh, I forgot the name of it, but like, like how to draw superheroes, but it was, it's made mainly just the human form, okay. you know, because superheroes are so human for me. So um, it's like to how to draw the head in 3D and you make ovals and like lines and lines mm -hmm. and ovals. And um, and then Scott McCloud, his his making comics book, which I know is a classic, is just it was just all the basics that I had never thought of before. Yeah. Like, oh <laughs> so right. and then like like thinking cinematically, like I love movies and I think I think in pictures too. So um, I think that's how getting uh composed okay but it's just doing it and doing it a lot yeah and with your new comic that's coming out how do you plan to promote it do you have any plans or just gonna um, i don't know <laughs> yeah, i think i'm gonna make a little paper zine to have a big stack of them at the um uh the zine fest i'm going to in okay. uh, march and i was thinking of some clever way of every time I go by a coffee shop, since it's set in a coffee shop, just to, to leave a tiny stack of them. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure 
why I'd love to go to like a barista and coffee festival if I can get enough to make like a little paper copy and just like sell them for. Are there barista and coffee festivals? Yes. Okay. I was unaware. That sounded like you just made that up to me. No. <laughs> <laughs> they are hardcore. They're around. And there's one in New York in um, April, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get there. Okay. But um, it'd be fun to have a table up and say, hey, these are the intricacies of your job, baristas. Right. Plus monsters. Don't you like that? <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. We'll have to see. Okay. <laughs> Well, if people wanted to check out uh, what you do and your work, where would you tell them that they should go? Oh, well, they can see all of it at sarahharveypatrick.com. Okay. I want to thank you so much for being on the show today. It was great meeting you. Thank you. So great to talk to you. 